Hello everybody. Alright, so this is my first time making a YouTube video about math. I'm very excited for you and for me. We today are going to be looking at this quadratic function, 2x squared minus x minus 15. I have already graphed it. We're not going to worry too much about the graph right now. What we're going to talk about is using the quadratic equation in order to factor this. Many of you look at this and you're thinking, okay, I can factor this without the quadratic equation, and that is good. If you can, that's the way to do it because that's going to be the fastest way. But if it's a more complex version of this, or if you can't do this one without using any other tools, then the quadratic equation is one way to do it. So if you recall the quadratic formula, we have x is equal to the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And that quadratic equation is used to find the zeros of the function. So what that means is here we've got our function, and graphically, this is the same function, and this function has what we call zeros. Zeros are where the function passes this x-axis. So here we have a zero, and here we have a zero. And we don't know what these x values are. I do, because I already did it. But we're going to find out together what these x values are for these zeros. We already know the y value is zero because it's on the x-axis. So the y value is zero. But what we want to know, we want to know what is the x value. Okay. Quadratic equation, we've got the opposite of b. b is negative 1. The opposite of negative 1 is positive 1. So we get 1 plus or minus the square root of b squared, negative 1 squared, minus 4ac. So we have minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is negative 15. We're going to take this all over 2a, and then a is 2, so 2 times 2. All right. Now, you can do this on your own if you want to pause the video here and figure it out by yourself. It would be a good time to do so. Otherwise, just keep watching, and I'm going to do it here. So we get 1 plus or minus, and then here we've got negative 4 times 2 times negative 15. So those negatives are going to cancel. We're going to end up with 8 times 15, which is what? That's 80 plus 40, that's 120. And then we're adding the 1, so that's 121. We're taking the square root, we get 11. All over 2 times 2, which is 4. All right, so now remember what we're figuring out. We're using the quadratic equation. We're figuring out the x values of the zeros of this function, of this equation here. All right, so we could say x equals. So when y equals 0, we're figuring out what x equals. When y equals 0, x equals this. x equals this. x equals, so now we're going to break it up. We've got 1 plus 11 which is going to be 12 divided by 4 is 3. Then we have 1 minus 11. So what is that? Negative 10 over 4. Negative 10 over 4. And then we could reduce that negative 10 over 4. So we could say x equals 3. And then negative 5 over 2, which is negative 2.5. So here you can see that our zeros, we've got negative 2.5 is that x value, and positive 3 is that x value. All right, now what we're doing, though, we're specifically using the quadratic equation to factor this. And so we want to come up with something that looks like, like this. There should be an x and an x and plus or minus something. And when we multiply it together, we want to get this. That's what we're shooting for. Okay, well, we know that when y equals 0, x equals these numbers. 
So we could say, let's see here, we could say that if x equals 3, and we subtract 3 from both sides, we could say x minus 3 equals 0, because we know x equals 3. And then here, we could say x minus 5 over 2. X minus 5 over 2 is equal to 0. Wait, hold on, is that right? I think we need a plus sign. So we've got x equals negative 5 over 2. We need a plus sign. We need to add 5 over 2 to both sides. And so I am speculating that one thing we could do is we could do x minus 3 times x plus 5 halves. So x minus 3. And then we've got our x plus 5 halves. Now, I don't like the way this looks. I'm sure you don't like the way this looks. That's okay. But we should verify. Let's check and see if it works. I'm going to go ahead and erase this part just so that we've got a little more space. I'm going to erase that and that. Okay. So if we were to distribute... Again, a good time to pause the video and distribute on your own if you'd like. We're going to get x times x, which is x squared. And then we're going to get, oh, and remember, this whole time we're saying equals 0. And so now we're going to get x times 5 halves. And then we've got minus 3 times x. So I'm going to say, let's say minus 3x plus 5 halves x. And then we've got minus 3 times 5 halves. Minus 3 times 5 over 2. And all of this equals 0. Okay, now this looks really messy. I'm going to clean this up by multiplying both sides by 2. So, when we multiply 0 by 2, we get 0. And then we're going to multiply this side by 2. We get our 2x squared minus 6x plus 5x minus 3 times 5. Ah, not 3 times 15. Boom, oh, 3 times 5. Now we can combine like terms. So we get 0 equals 2x squared minus x. And this becomes minus 15. And look, 2x squared minus x minus 15. Okay, now, interesting little side note. We did this, right? But this doesn't look really cool. We can make it look really cool. And so what we're going to do is we're, we're going to take this x plus 5 halves, and we're going to change it. Um, we can multiply both sides of this equation by 2. So we end up with 2x plus 5 equals 0. All right, so now I'm going to make a new claim down here. I'm going to say if we take our x minus 3 and we multiply it by our 2x plus 5, if we do this, I'm claiming that this is going to equal this. And I kind of want to leave that there, so let's just go ahead and do it. So we get 2x squared, and then we've got our plus 5x minus 6x, that's minus x, minus 15. Look at that, that one worked. Okay, now another claim. We could use these numbers here too, this negative 10 and this 4. And how would we do that? So if we had like this x plus 10 over 4, um, let's see, we'd want to multiply both sides by 4, so let's go ahead and write that out down here, x plus 10 over 4 equals 0, we're going to multiply both sides by 4, so we get our 4x plus 10 equals 0, okay, next claim, we're going to do the same x minus 3, and we're going to multiply it by 4x plus 10. 
x plus 10. All right, what do we get? We get 4x squared. And remember, we're saying it equal to 0. 4x squared. And plus 10x minus 12x. So that's minus 2x minus 30 equals 0. Now, it still is true, right? It still equals 0. However, we didn't really get what we're trying to factor. Remember, this is what we want. 2x squared minus x minus 15. And we got that here. Um, we also got that here. So this one was fine. And... Oh, no, we didn't get it here. See that? We had to multiply by 2 in order to make it look like this. So we did not, this one did not work. This is the only one that worked. I'm learning with you guys. Okay, so this one worked. This one did not work. In order to make it look like that, we have to divide both sides by 2. If we divide both sides by 2, we get 2x squared minus x minus 15 equals 0. And now it looks correct. But in order to get it, we had to divide both sides by 2. And if let's say that you decided to start with this, right? I reduced it. This is the way to go. You want to reduce it to a reduced improper fraction. That's the way to do it. But let's say you forgot and you accidentally did this. You end up with this. And you see, hmm, I have to divide by 2. Well, that tells you you didn't reduce your fraction. And you can see it right here, too. You could take a 2 out of this 4x plus 10, and it become 2x plus 5. So if you divide both sides by 2, it brings it down to its simplest form. There's literally a siren going off in my first video ever. That's terrible. <laughs> but I'm going to leave it in there, because it's kind of comical. All right. I hope you get some value out of this video. If you do, please like and subscribe. Take care.